All right, hello. So I'm gonna show you how to do a timing attack on a password protected device. So what I have here, or pin protected more accurately, because I have this USB hard drive deal. Um, this is an end of life product, so you can find them pretty cheap, like 10 bucks. You put a hard drive in the enclosure, um, and when you enter a special password on the front panel, I've removed the front panel here, uh, the hard drive remounts as this fully functional version of itself. So by default, I can show you, um, oops, I think the hard drive is not mounted. So if I plug it in, what you'll see is the hard drive will come up and it'll have just a limited space available. So 74 gigs, there's 150 gig or 250 gig hard drive in there, whatever. Um, and if I enter the password, so the password for this is one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it does some little dance there and remounts itself. So it unmounts itself and then remounts itself as a two hard drive. So this is the original, the public partition it's calling it. And then there's this secret partition vault. All right, so we wanna break that password, the pin really. Um, assuming we don't know, we have no idea what the pin is, but we have a device that we'd like to get access to. Uh, so this is basically a demonstration of when you do a comparison between, it can work with a password too. If you store the password or the pin in native format, so internally in the code, they're storing the password as one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, they receive the entire entered password. And then once they've received it, they check it character by character. There's gonna be slight differences in if it fails right away um, or if it fails later on the check. So we can see this in the timing differences of the signal. So there's a few clips here. Um, so the first clip is on the button. This is on the number nine button. And what I'm actually measuring is when the microcontroller is checking the number nine button. So if I zoom out a bit, what you see is that the buttons are using multiplexing to save IO pins. Um, so several groups of buttons, three groups of buttons are connected to the next three, to the next three, etc. cetera. Uh, and the microcontroller just scans them every however often this is, 20 or 10 milliseconds, something like that, uh, to see if they've been pressed. So I need to make sure my timing is relative to when the microcontroller knows it got pressed, not when I press the button. So to actually trigger the capture, I'm gonna take advantage of um, something I figured out that this light, obviously the LED goes on, you saw when I entered the wrong password. So if I enter, you know, zero, 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 it goes on after every button press, but it also goes on um, high after I enter the wrong password. The way they've done the LED for some reason, there's a convenient signal point that only goes low once all numbers have been entered. So it's not low during the um, during the blinks here, you can see on the scope, it's nothing's changing. So it's triggering on the falling edge. But as soon as I press it, uh, it triggers again. So they've done that for part of how they did the multiplexing. It's kind of just luck that it works out being very convenient for us. If you didn't have that, it would basically mean you would have to, um, you'd have to filter out all the extra blinks that you don't care about. But anyway, so it's just as applicable. All right, so let's go on to the timing attack. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with going zero, nine, 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 nine. Um, and this time delta here from when the, the microcontroller scanned the button to when the LED goes low, this is basically the processing time when it's checking the password. So this assumes that the first number is not zero. It could be zero, in fact, we don't know this. Um, and I'm now just going to check one nine 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 nine, then two nine 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 nine, three nine 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 nine. What I expect is that as soon as I hit the right digit, um, the processing time will increase because one digit has checked out okay, and it needs to check the next one. So now let's try one nine 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 nine, and oh wait a minute, you see on the scope here that this glitch just moved over. So I can redo that if you don't believe me, one. And we see again that same glitch. Whereas if I were to check two nine 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 nine, we'll see the system is um, occurring 
oh, back at the same point as 099999 because it fails two. It says two is the wrong number, so it immediately stops checking the rest. Um, and same if we go three. So in reality, what we do now, we now know the first number is one, so we just try to brute force the next number. So we go one, um, nine, 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 nine. So we need to get our timing reference back because I was screwing around there. So we move this um, cursor along, okay? And now we go, so we know the first number is one, zero, nine, 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 nine. And nope, still the same timing, so we didn't get it. And now we go one, one, nine, 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 nine. Still the same timing. We just have to wait till the light goes out. One, two, nine, 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 nine. And oh, hey, this this moved over, so we move this timing. So we now know it goes one, two, something. So again, we just use our brute force. One, two, zero, nine, nine, nine. Oh, still the same. One, two, one, nine, nine, nine. Still the same. One, two, two, nine, nine, nine. Still the same. One, two, three, nine, nine, nine. And hey, it jumped again, so we now know the next number is three. So we can just keep doing this um, for the entire system. So I'm not gonna brute force everything here and bore you. I'll just show you. So if I go one, two, three, four, nine, nine, and then we see the same jump because I've entered another correct number. One, two, three, four, five, nine. And hey, we see a jump again. So we're not quite right yet. So now all we need is the last number. So we stop using the nine, obviously, because um, we don't want to hit. We know it's not nine. Otherwise, the drive would have worked. And we don't even need to do the timing attack because as soon as we get the right number, the drive is going to remount itself. So we could just do one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, one, etc. Um, or obviously six now would work. So now we would know, hey, the drive worked and we've recovered the entire, um, the entire pin. So this is really simple to do. Um, so this is a timing attack in real life. I'm using an oscilloscope. Obviously you could do this with anything, um, logic analyzer, bus pirate type thing. Um, and you will get this effect anywhere using a pin. Um, that isn't storing a hash of the pin, but storing the pin itself, which is pretty common in simple-ish embedded devices, so like security systems or stuff like that, uh, may not bother with storing the entire pin. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed just a brief timing attack. And I'm actually going to have a number of training courses at Black Hat USA 2014. So if you're interested in seeing a whole day of these type of attacks, including power analysis, be sure to check it out.